In today's video, we'll see the Parson 115 get its first service under the strict supervision of Super Sai from Villa and Marine. Good morning folks and welcome to the Happy Hooker YouTube channel. This morning, I'm down at uh, Simon Iam, I'm down at Bill Iam Marines actually, I've come down to see Simon Iam. Um, it's time for my Parson 115 EFI's first service. Uh, it should have been done a couple of weeks ago, really, but uh, it, it, we just haven't managed to get together to do it. Uh, so what's going to happen is, when Simon comes round, I think he's bringing his boat round as well, he's going to service his engine, which is exactly the same as mine, at the same time. Um, now with the Parson, you don't have to have dealer services. You can service them yourself and it does not affect your warranty. Um, which is brilliant, I think it's absolutely spot on. Uh, I think you've got to get the, the, the only place you can buy the actual kit to service them though is off Simon at Belay Marine. <coughs> so it, it's not a big deal, is it? You, you, you get the engines a lot cheaper than, than a normal one. And, and to be fair, guys, <coughs> I wouldn't use anything else now. This is the absolute daddy. Um, it's good on fuel. It's good on fuel. It's good on fuel. It's got plenty of power. Uh, it does everything that I ask it to, no questions asked. Um, anyway, when he brings his engine round, he's going to service his at the side of mine, and I'm going to do my own, um, and that way I know how to do it, because I'll have watched him, and I'll have shown him, and hopefully by the time I'm done, you'll know how to do one as well. Hey, and that's not bad, is it? And then later on, I'm going to go and launch my boat on the streets, and uh, the weather's not great, but... It'd be rude not to run it. Let's get some fishing done in a bit, eh? I'll get on with the service when Simon appears. See you shortly, guys. Morning, guys, and welcome to the Happy Hooker YouTube channel. Today, we're at Bill Isle Marine, and we're going to be servicing my parson. Here he comes now. Hey, 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 hey. Oh, where's this guy? It's Richard Ha, 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 ha. Subscribe. Right guys, as you've gathered, I'm assuming because I didn't see what you were saying, but Simon's here now. Uh, look what I've got for Sai. <laughs> Come on, happy your uh, with the with the super Sai on it. There you go, Sai. <laughs> I can't wait. I've been looking forward to this for ages. I'll get a picture of him after he's going on Rome's gallery with it. <laughs> Does it fit? Does it fit? Look at that. Now that, now that is super skinny size. <laughs> what do we think of the sponsors, Si? Sponsors, Parson, Power Your Dream, Bill Hay and Marine. Yes. Oh, happy days. Thank you, mate. <laughs> You're welcome, buddy. Here we go, guys. Here's Si with the Piscator. Oh, this is not turning for some reason. There we go. Tightened it down a bit. There we go, that's better. So Simon has got, uses the exact same engine that I use. Which is very handy, isn't it? Because now we can show me uh, out, of, out of service here. Right guys, uh, Simon's engine, my engine. I'm assuming you can see them both. I'll just fall over that. Uh, it's just gone getting the service kits now uh, and the tools what's required. What I am going to do is I'm going to switch you over to the head strap so that you can see what I'm doing at the engine while I'm doing it. How's that for an idea? I think that sounds good. Here we go, guys. Got a big box of tricks here. What, what, for, what, what are you actually seeing in the camera right side before I uh, when, do I need so, to tilt it? We've got, let me have a look. Keep your head still. Yeah, it looks okay, that. Right, so if I'm looking now, you should be able to see that. We've got service items. The service items for this first service are very, very simple indeed. Uh, gearbox drain washers and oil filters. That's all it needs for the first service. Other than that, it's just lubricants. We've got some marine grease. We've got marine four-stroke oil. Uh, we've got marine gear, high performance gear lube. And we've got some corrosion guard. And we've got some rubber latex gloves for when the camera goes off later. <laughs> well, there's plenty of lube there, isn't there? Let's have it right. <laughs> Next. <laughs> Lovely. I'll see you in another hour. <laughs> right, guys. Size ready. He's got his toolkit here. 
what what do we need for the task at hand? I'm just getting the tools out and then I will talk you through them. Right, well while he's doing that, I'm gonna take the hood off, which is basically a lever here, and I think there's one at the back. Is there one at the back on these? Yeah. And another one at the back there. Uh get hold of the top, lift and pull and shove that look at that beautiful beautiful looking thing there all shiny and sparkly still Sorry. shift these up to the way now, trust me guys i am the destroyer of anything nice I, I can make anything look a tip within minutes look at that As soon as he's back with tool kit. Okay. Right. So all the tools you need are these ones here for your first service. Now, you need an oil filter wrench, but if you don't have one of those, don't worry. You can use a dirty big pair of water pump pliers because you use those to get the oil filter off and the new one you can put on hand tight. You need a one and a sixteenth socket that's to take your propeller off what's that in new money uh, millimeters put you on the spot there didn't i four, five. right uh you'll need well i've i've got a ratchet for this but if you're not using one of those you don't need this ratchet a pair of side cutters to take your split pin off for the propeller big flat-headed screwdriver for your gearbox drain washers and that's to help you take your propeller off as well that's literally all the tools you need so it's when we say that they're serviceable by yourself now you're starting to see why yeah that's pretty simple isn't it so the first job is to run the engines up get them nice and warm uh, that will warm the gear oil through it will warm ah. the engine oil through so when we drain it we know we're going to get every little, last little bit out ah yeah. uh, every day is a school day so i need to so now i need to go to my van for the keys yeah, we need the keys <laughs> uh, we're going to need some water supply so right. the water supply yeah the keys. i will uh, i'll bring you back in when we're ready to rock and roll guys so is there a, he's got the water now is there a correct way and a wrong way of doing that yeah the correct way is how I've done it, connect the flush muffs and then start the engine. The wrong way is how you do it and never do it. Right. No. <laughs> <laughs> it's never out the water long enough. Oh, no, that's fair enough. Well, I'm not going to argue that. Okay, so start the engine. Start her up. Here we go, guys. Absolute freezy cool start. Uh, turn the key. That's the ignition on. It's fingers out. Dogs away. Listen to that! I'll tell you what I will do guys, I will just open the uh, air vent on the fuel tank. Very important, very important. I'm hoping you are seeing what, what I am looking at and what I'm doing, to be fair. Right, and there we go. One engine, flush in. I don't think you need to see too much of that, do you? When it's warm, I'll bring you back in. Right, so she's been running about five minutes. The engine is nice and warm. The gearbox is fairly warm, so that'll be us. We can switch it off now and then we can drain the oils. Sorted. I'll bring you back in when we're starting to uh, undo things. Right. Okay, so the first thing you do is tilt the engine up a little bit. How much am I going, sir? And drain the gear oil. Drain on this is on this side. Not How much do you want it up? You want the drain Let me get my head on this right. to be the lowest point. Right, so I'll just in perspective, there's the right, so there's the drain hole. I'm assuming do we let the water run up or does it not matter? It doesn't really matter to be honest. Right, I'll put you back on my head and I'll get on with it. Put that away. So there's a screw in. You've got a drain screw there and a fill screw there. Oh, in it goes. Is it sit normal screw? Yeah. Let you loose it. Well, Johnny said that because we're about to tighten it. There you go. Just get the drip tray underneath. Am I going to get covered in oil now? No, you're not. It shouldn't be under any pressure. 
Look at that. Go. Not so even a drip. The most important bit is the first bit of oil that comes out. Yeah. So get that out, rub it on the back of your hand. Yeah. And if you see any metal filings, just rub them along and see if you can feel them. If you can feel them, then you've got gearbox damage. Right. If you can just see them, there's no problem. Right, and can you see any? I can't there's see any. Nothing whatsoever there, that, that's like a brand new pin. So well, that, that shows that the tolerances that this gearbox were made to are very, very good. Right, brilliant. Yeah, that, that oil looks brand new to be honest. Yep. So next you pop that one out. The same screwdriver, what same do I do? Screwdriver. Same screwdriver. Are they actually, can you see what they're seeing? Yeah. They're seeing everything all right, yeah. yeah? Sorry guys, I just had to check. I didn't want you looking at the floor or at the sky. And that always helps, drop it in the oil. Nobody wanted to see that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh. You can have that, do I need that drip? Take that out, we're gonna put new ones on anyway. Yeah. So these are throwaway items, single use. So yeah, if you look on here, there's a little magnet. So any of the, um, ah. the wear on the, that you'll get on your first use will, will come on here. But can you see, that's completely, there's no, I can't feel anything there. No. Nope. So we're going to clean that, and then we're going to put new oil in. Lovely. So while we're doing that guys, we've got Simon's um, engine running to warm up. I tell you what, just listen to these babies purr. <laughs> I absolutely love it. Brilliant. Absolutely spot on. I've got oil on me! Oh no! I've got some dirt on me! <laughs> I should have took my new top off, should I? <laughs> oh look, by the way guys, if anybody would like one of these tops, then uh, please do drop me a line. 30 quid each, if you want your name on the uh, blaze, on that side they go. If you want your name on the blaze, that's an extra three quid. The postage of package on them is a, is a fiver. So, get your orders in. We do red, navy and sky blue. Uh, we also do polo shirts at 1950, uh, same colours, same spec, and t-shirts, they're going to be 50 quid each, uh, same spec, again, if you would like something, I mean, just look at that, what a handsome model of, of, of an Audi, uh, just give them a spin please, Si, absolutely, there, and that's where the name will be going, on the, on the uh, shoulder blaze, so if you want one of them, let me know, I'll let Si get on with this and stop nagging you. Oh, 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 he said, oh, he says they're all covered in oil. <laughs> Oops. Right. Do I need them? Yeah. I'm not frightened of a bit of oil, you know. No, I know, but it's uh, due diligence. Help right, me. now, now, these things come in different sizes, guys. They're not all built for the same thing, are they? Big, big hands, big hands, big gloves. Yeah, big hands, big gloves. Jesus Christ, these are made for midgets, aren't they? <laughs> Midget. I tell you what, guys. I think. I think I'll just. Uh, I'm going. I'm going in burr. I'm going to rough it. <laughs> Oh, it's yours all broke as well. <laughs> what do we think of these gloves? Rubbish! Rubbish. <laughs> oh, he's going to try again. I'm are, you, are you having them on? To do, the right, to do it right, I, generally speaking, you shouldn't, but I, I never wear gloves. No. But to show people the right way of doing it, yes. oil is actually Plastic is it? Oh, I'm pretty sure all the asbestos I find in roofs is as well, so a bit more oil is not going to uh, make much difference, is it? Hey, that's what did my dad asbestos. Were it? Yeah. Is that what they did? A bit of the asbestosis? No, it was uh, mesothelioma. <coughs> nasty cancer of the uh, uh, chest. Cavity right. Lining. Through asbestos. Through asbestos. And is that was that through this sort of work? It was when he worked in the. 
the Manchester liners. Right. Uh, one of his jobs when the boat, when the boat was alongside was to uh, strip all the pipe lagging. Ah, right. Yeah, so a little, little bit full of it. Lying down on his back, and there was like light shining through. You could see it in the air, like snow. Yeah. And he always said he would get it. And, and it did. 70, 71. That's when he did it. Right. And he and he stopped having any exposure to it when he was like 27. Wow. Yeah. So that's 50 years it took. Yeah, well, 30, 35, 40 years. Yeah. Hi. <laughs> 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 Right, what are we up to, Sai? Right. How long does how long do we have to leave that for? That's it. Even though it's still dripping out a bit, does that matter? Does that does that want to be still same angle still? Yeah, same angle. Yeah. So next what you're gonna do is fill from the bottom until it comes out the top. Right. Using that pumper, that pumper up, and it will take you probably five minutes or so. Have I got a pump for five minutes? You have got to pump for five minutes. Don't tell Kirsty I've been pumping for five minutes for crying out loud. Hey? Eh? That screws into. Screws into there somewhere. Where is it? There we go. Does it just just finger tight? Yep. And pump away guys. There we go. Let's go pumping. Five minutes, eh? Wow. Hold on, hold on, hold on. You're going at it like a bull in a china shop. Right, so... You don't want any air in this. Yep. So just... Nice and steady. Let it come up by itself. Yep. So there's no air. Ah, right. Otherwise, you won't get a full fill. Right, so I've just made the balls of it already. Yeah. See guys how easy you, that is? And you know how important it is to be fulfilled when you're pumping? Yep. Don't you? <laughs> well, I'm always happy. <laughs> there we go. Nice and slow. Steady pace wins the race. Should get that on my t-shirt, shouldn't I? You should. That's one thing I am thinking about doing on the hoodies and the t-shirts, guys. I'm uh, thinking of putting some catchphrases on the um nobody likes to see that happen do they that's a good one dirty dirty dog fish morning folks tell half an hour <laughs> what else do i say i don't even know bing bong boo <laughs> i puddled out of oh nice and slow and steady i'm sure it's sucking it back out wow Tell you what, there must have been a well look at all oil in the bottom of that box. So there's a fair amount in them. I don't know exactly how much it takes. I will ask the question. Oh, is there, uh, uh, what sort of um, volume of oil did it take, si? Just under a litre, that one. Just under a litre? Yeah. Right. I would say. What is the cost on the service kit? Including oil was maybe 35 quid, 40 quid. It's, that is as cheap as that. Yeah, and the cost really? of a service, if, if we were doing it for you, would be. The first service, 150 quid. That's about. So you're saving a lot by doing it yourself. You are, but I mean, 150 quid. I don't think many people are doing it themselves. They just, uh, as long as you weren't too busy, they just say, "Sai, please, please get that done for me." Well, we're grateful of the work and people who who are too busy to do it themselves. Then that's what we're here for. But if they need advice and they want to do it themselves, then we will also embrace that. Brilliant. Would you allow people to come and do what I'm doing here? No. No. This is a special case for you because you... Because I'm special. special. <laughs> so we'll leave oh, hey, up. There we go. Okay. So is, is that... Did you see that, guys? It just... Uh, it just... It just poured a bit of oil out. So that's you. Yeah. Do I You've give it another out. pump or is that it? No. You can give it one more pump just to get the last of the bubbles out. There you go, that's, that's all it, done. And now, you've got two nice clean drain screws. That, I'm uh, going to say, one, that's the bottom one, is the it? The one with the magnet is the bottom one, yeah. Right, lovely, thank you very much. In fact, I'll take one at a time, because... So you put the top one in first, and then when you take that, the bottom I'm one I'm assuming out, that goes like that. Yeah. Right. Now then, guys, I am not adapted to these little fiddly... Uh, there we go, that worked. In fact, 
Is that right? You don't want to cross thread it, do I? You don't want to cross thread it, no. That would make a very quick job, a very, very long job. And a very expensive one, I would have thought. <laughs> yeah, because we'd have to strip the gearbox to re-thread that. Right, ha, now. Yeah, you're thinking, aren't you? Yeah. Well, because you've put the top one in, you've got a vacuum in there, right. so when you unscrew that, it's not going to come flying out. It's not, so I have got time to get it out and get it. Get, it, get one out, get one in. That's exactly right, yeah. <laughs> Right, so undoing this, guys. As I says, there is a vacuum. There we go. We lost a little tiny bit. I'll set it off with my fingers. I'm hoping you are seeing what I'm doing. Now, I think I may have to. Oh no, we're, we're all right. I thought we were going to have to move the oil box, but it's all right. We don't need to. So how tight am I putting these, Si? Just hand tight. Just, oops. I'm gonna get it in the, I'm get it in the slot. That's it, done. Nip. Nip. Nip, done. Well done. Do you want me to just have a little quick feel you of it? You just have a check. Check I've done it right. Not wrong with an extra little nip, is Perfect. there? Perfect. Right. About a sixteenth of a turn out, but otherwise that would problem. Sixteenth. I can live with a sixteenth of a turn. Yeah. Right. So next we're going to take the propeller off. Yeah. So we've got a little tab washer here. And how does that work? On there. So you you need to bend the tab out like that. Oh, look, I'll see it on the top one. Yeah. Yeah. Just give it a little tap. Push it flat. Same on the other side. Yep. Like that. Then you're going to unscrew this. On my one, I've got a split pin holding it instead of a tab washer. Right. So they're the two possible methods. Right. Let's get a bit of a uh, bit of a bit of hand rub. You don't want to get your tools all full of oil. Right, guys. You heard that. So. What do I need? That big socket, is it? You need the, this socket. Yeah. To unscrew. And um, will, will this spin or is this the same normal? Uh, a, a nice thing to, to use is just a piece of wood between the gearbox got and one the there. propeller. That big enough? Yeah. Put that there. And which way? There you go. Was, was, that, was that it? Yeah. All oh, right. Doesn't have to I were expecting it to to be. Uh, well, the nut doesn't have to be tight. And we're taking that all the way off, are we? Yep. Does do I pull the propeller off now? Yeah. But no washers, nothing like that. Right, one nut off. Put your bits on there so that they stay clean. Fairly clean. I'll just pull now, do I? Pull that off, yeah. Look at that, guys. Top on there. Yeah. Take your thrust washer off. Just pull. Yeah. Now you're going to grease up the shaft. <laughs> <laughs> you, can't, you can't see my face, guys. Right, give us a clue. Do I have to just press that or? No, you squeeze that. And that will come out, will it? Where am I going? Just on that or in there? You're going to put some on there. How much? That's enough on there. And then plenty on the splines. Do I have to come up and down or will it? Up and down. Well, yeah. if I do it at the top? You the... need to grease, grease the full length oh, of the shaft. Yeah. Grease the full length of the shaft. That'll do, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Now you're going to get your fingers dirty. I don't mind. So wipe the grease around this face here because that's where the. I might, need, sits. I might need another splodge. One more splodge, please, guys. That's how I mean. There we go. Yeah. Yeah, well, that'll do for that, will it? Yep. And then I'm assuming I'm doing that. That's it, yeah. Give it a good larrapin, guys. You can't have enough grease. There we go. All them grooves full. Yeah, that's it. And the uh, thread. And the thread as well. As well. That's a nice looking grease. It's marine. Quicksilver marine. Right. Two four C it's called. If anyone's interested. Yeah, and thrust burning back on. Thrust washer. Now the thrust washer, if you forget to put the thrust washer on, yeah. it gives dire consequences to Does the it? gearbox. Because that bears all the load, the forward load from the propeller. So 115 horsepower of load that bears. Right. If you forget to put that on, then your propeller, in this case a stainless steel one, pushes 
against your gear case. Ah. And it just eats right through the gear case. Yeah. And how and long does have, it take honestly, to do that? We have come across engines that have been run without a thrust washer and the gearbox is down to here. <laughs> it's literally unbolt it, throw it in the bin. <laughs> put a new <laughs> one in. Half grand later, put a new one on. So these it. are heavier than. <laughs> <laughs> They'll just cut out, shall we, guys? Huh? Yeah. So this bit into the plastic hub doesn't want greasy. Right. Yeah, it's got a little grooves that it does fit in. Yeah. So have I dropped anything else? Pop that in. I was just wait, feeling way to that. It was uh, surpri this surprisingly heavy. So that is that it? Yep. Yep. So I'm going to get you a new tab washer. That one knackered, is it? Well, they're just single use these. Because what will happen if you bend it that way and then bend it that way, it bend snaps. it that way, yeah, they will yeah, snap. Yeah. Get metal time. fatigue. So let's put a brand new one on. Right, we'll it. I will switch you off while uh, Chief Mechanic goes wandering off because he's forgot something. <laughs> <laughs> new tab washer. One well, new tab washer. On it goes. Now, I'm assuming that that goes with them two little spigots in there. Correctly. Oops, nearly. In there! There we go. Right, so it's washer on now, is it? On. That way? Yep. See if we could cross thread that. And now, am I just finger tightening this or? You, you, can, you can nip it. But it doesn't have to be tight tight, it's the tab washer that does the work in holding it in place. Right. And four hours later, there we go. It's the other way, it's that way, there we go. There we go. So that's that's hand tight, you want me to nip it? Yep. How much of a nip? Well, have a look at the where the nut is in relation to the tabs and you want it on the, the, the flat on the, of the on nut the square. On, on right. one of the tabs. Come on, touch more. Uh, I'm reckoning. I'm reckoning we're uh, we're pretty good at that. Yeah. Yeah. So do I just get the screwdriver and you can use your screwdriver and just flick it in. Watch your eyes when you're doing yeah. that. There we go. And do the thing. I'm going to watch with my bloody thumb because I could I could see me slipping with that screwdriver then. And that's as simple as that, is it? Yep. Perfect. So that's going nowhere. That's the prop done. Oh, another thing that you want to do if yeah. you've hit the bottom. Like I may possibly have done last weekend. <laughs> I weren't going to mention that, sorry. <laughs> it's like it's a bite. Um, if you've hit the bottom at any time, look at the centre of the prop, the prop shaft, and give it a spin. Yep. And that wants to be true. Right. You can do it by eye, that's absolutely fine. Yep. So that's your gearbox done. Next, we're going to observe the anode. There's a little bit of corrosion on here. Parson uses Marta anodes, they're fantastic quality zinc, pure zinc. Um, so there's a little tiny bit of corrosion just there. I don't know whether the camera can pick it up. Yeah, it's getting. Well, I'm, I'm assuming it's getting it. But what, what the, causes that? So you know we were talking about the sacrificial protection of an anode yep. on, uh, on, on aluminium. Yeah. So it's about the galvanic table. This is higher in the galvanic table than aluminium. I think it's that way around. Someone will correct me. I'm sure. Um, so corrosion is the the loss of electrons yep. to the seawater environment. Uh, and the way that that chemical reaction happens is that the, the aluminium gains an oxygen. So it's aluminium oxide then. Yeah. And that's what corrosion is. I'll stop nodding my head, eh? <laughs> that's what corrosion is. The, the zinc anode gives up its electrons more readily than aluminium. So it will eat that rather so than eat that. It's got an electrical connection between the aluminium and the zinc. That, uh, so long as the zinc is not painted, you can't paint your anodes. Right. It's going to be open to the seawater environment. That corrodes before the aluminium, basically. Right. Oh, that's, that's what, what you want. That's what these little uh, earth cables are about on the engine. They're not for any other electrical connection other than between the aluminium pieces. Right. So that uh, there's the whole of the, the engine is, is protected by zinc. Perfect. Yeah? Yep. School day. Always, <laughs> always a school day, guys. Right, always okay, so a school day. Next thing, Let's put that out of way. Yeah. Still nice and warm, so we're going to drain the engine oil next. And yeah, I was about to say, how do we do that? But you're about to tell me. Tilt the engine down as far as it will go. Here. Uh, well, am I going to have to take that? I may have to take my number plate off, or will it? Oh, do you? That's enough. Yeah. So we just passed vertical now. Yeah. 
this is the drain that's the lowest part of the sump right <coughs> there i'm going to give you a 14 mil socket which i've not forgotten <laughs> he never forgot that <laughs> See, doesn't matter how experienced you are, guys. <laughs> I've got to speed that up. I hope it's not going to, because that's really going to embarrass me. Thank Christ for that. Ah, so that actually, see, I thought this was something to do with the exhaust fuse. No, nope, it's your sump drain. Right, so... You can unscrew that. And we're working right way? Yep. We'll get it on it first. Jesus. Uh, and all the way out, I'm assuming. Yeah. So if you take the ratchet off now, just take the ratchet off. Right. And just do it with. Yeah. Do it by hand. See, look at all these tricks of the trades, guy. There you go. Because I'd have been there for an hour with that other thing, wouldn't I? Now let's see if I can drop this in the oil. Oh, there we go. We have oil. There Lovely. Right. Is there any seals or.? There's a drain washer, an aluminium drain washer. That is, I found it, that's be, that, yeah. We'll be replacing. Well, oh, that gets changed, does it? Yeah, it's good practice too. It doesn't have to be, but it's good practice too. Wow, how much oil does it hold? Three litres. Really? Yeah. What's that, what, in relation to a car, what size is that engine? It's 115 horsepower, so it's similar size to a small car. Right, so what, a, a one litre, two well, litre? Like a, a tranny van, yeah. they're about 120 horsepower. Wow, so that's... <laughs> so it's the same power as a tranny van, basically. That's ridiculous, isn't it? Yeah. But this is petrol, not diesel, so it's smaller and lighter. Right. Outboard engines are designed to be some small and light. Yeah. Simply because they've got to get a boat up onto the plane, and the heavier they, heavier they are, they're doing a lot of work in lifting themselves, aren't they? Yes, they are. Do they actually do diesel outboards? They do. They've never been successful at all in the pleasure sector. Right. Because of their expense and weight. Yeah. But in some of the commercial sectors, they they are gaining a bit of a foothold. Right. There's been a few made, and there's been a lot of cock ups, and there's been some that have been too heavy, too expensive, unreliable. And Cox are, are one company that are making them at the moment. Right. Um, but they, yeah, so far as I understand, they, they're not particularly reliable. And there's also OX. I think they may have stopped production, actually. So they're not likely to be seen in the leisure industry just yet? They're not likely to be seen in the le leisure industry full stop. I they're not? Say. No. I think hydrogen power will be the next right. the, the, the next big change. I don't think electric is going to work for the marine industry. Mm. They're not on plane hull boats anyway because no. the power density of, of lithium is um, it's like three orders of magnitude less than petrol. So for your 25 litres of petrol, yeah. 25 kilograms, yeah. you know how far that'll get you, that'll get yeah. you 25 miles, 25, 30 there, miles. There yeah. whereas you're going to ha have to have 30 times more to do the same mileage, yeah. so you'd have to have, yeah I'm with, I'm with you, so it'd be up to 75 would it? Weight, weight wise, yeah. you know. Right. Well fuel as a rule, I think liquids are about a kilo a litre, aren't they? There or thereabouts. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, so, so you'd be putting an extra 70. Do I need to do that or clean that up after? What's this? This. No, you don't need to worry about that. Right, we'll not worry about that. And we'll put that down somewhere. I'll wrap it again, eh? So once you've drained it, you get your. Uh, All right, that goes back in there right away, does it? Get your bolt back in, yeah. Well, of course it goes right back in, otherwise you pull your oil straight out, won't I? <laughs> Thank you very much. So, same again, just a good nip. Yeah, you're going to have to whiz it all the way up first. And while you're doing that, I'll go and dispose of this oil. And that is getting responsibly disposed of, guys, not just poured down a grid. Right, that's a nip and a nip. I will let him check the nip when he comes back. Because being a roofer and not a mechanic, I'm not sure how much to tighten stuff and how much not to tighten stuff. Now, I can't take the camera off my head because I'm getting a bit oily now, which we don't mind, we like a bit of oil. Would you mind just uh, having a check at the nip? 
No, See, if all. I've overdone it or underdone it. Perfect. Perfect. There we go. What um, what engine oil are we using? As in synthetic or? Uh, it's just bog standard, marine grade, four stroke oil. It's a semi synthetic oil that we use, right. and it's 10 W30. Lovely. Perfect. So next, you're going to put your oil in. So what we're going to need to do is tilt the engine up a little bit so that we can get our funnel in. So have you remembered the funnel? <laughs> <laughs> is that up enough? No, a bit more. Get it up some more, get it up! That'll probably do, yeah. <coughs> Very plain and simple, guys. Oil top off. Three litres. Yeah. You probably get it in. We've got a nice little pourer. We've got an eye out. Now, Sai is the expert here, so I'm going to trust, trust his judgment. Now, let's get a funnel. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'll, uh, wait there. I'll just wait here. <laughs> <laughs> Here he comes. <laughs> it's my fault for having you doing it over here, isn't it? Here's one I prepared earlier. Right. Now, have you got. I've, I've, what was in that jug, Sai? Three litres. Alright, so that is for one engine. Measured. Right, lovely. Top tip. Go. And in it goes. What just. Nice and steady, or yeah, just hold the oh, sugar, you yeah. Don't that going south, do you? No, we were wearing it, weren't I? Yeah, it wouldn't be much fun. Not on my nice new hoodie, my hooker's, my, my happy hooker hoodie. And that's as easy as that, is it? Easy as that. Is that enough? Done? Yeah, that's it, done. <laughs> that out. Right. Swap you. Yeah, you have that, I'll have that. What's next? Or is that it? Engine oil filter is next. Or engine oil filter, there we go. Yep. Uh, same again, just a nip. Yep, bring it tight. Yep. So, we're going to pretend that we're doing this on the hoof and yep. we're not professional marine engineers. Yep. So you're going to use that. The engine Grab back it. down or up? Unscrew it. Unscrew it that way. Right. So, I did say, ask the question before, guys. <coughs> Do I stick a screwdriver through it and uh, twist it? That would be an hour. <laughs> so, there you go. So, it doesn't matter if you damage it. It is going. I just had to get a grip of it properly. There we go. And I'm assuming that your uh, little. Ah! Ah! <laughs> your little uh, tool. Cures having to do all this. Because yeah. it is slightly awkward, guys. Not very. See, look, I'm scratching all my uh, hood and everything. So, my advice would be to buy one of the. Uh, can we show them that? I mean, it's not going to work on this one now, because it's all twisted and bent. My advice would be invest in one of them if you are going to be servicing them yourself. Now, just while we're doing this, Si, yes. should somebody want to buy one of these engines? Yes. From yourself, yes. Um, what is the cost to buy the engine, and what is the cost to buy the engine fitted? So at the moment, we've got a bit of an offer on, and these are under nine grand. I think they're eight eight at the moment. All right. And fitting, we generally charge if we're taking one engine off, which we almost always are, and fitting one of these. We'll take your old engine in part exchange. We always offer to do that. Exchange and we will fit the fitting cost will be 800 quid, yeah, including VAT. And your old engine will give you fair market value for yep. it. What I'd like to do, because I'm a good guy, as you know, is be dead transparent. I'll tell you why it's worth if you wanted to sell it privately as well, yeah, so you can decide whether you want to sell it yourself or whether you want us to take it as part. Of it. Well, that's fair enough, yeah, can't step further than that, right? So you've just said under nine grand, yeah. Plus your 800 fitted, yep. so we're on 9.8. Yeah. Less a bit for, let's say, 500 quid just for a, 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 a nonsense mark. I mean, if, if, you've yeah. got, if you've got like like yours was, it was a it was a it, was, it was an old thumper. Yeah, 
it was a two stroke which was pretty dead yeah we gave you the price of fitting for that did we eight hundred quid or something did you give me a bit more than that to be fair quid. yeah 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 okay yeah well, which yeah. i was more than happy with yeah. um so what in relation to if i was to buy a mercury a honda or a suzuki engine yeah same spec 115 is what would be, it cost me it's going to be between 11 and 14 grand depending on what brand you go for so let's say on average then 12 grand so that's a yeah. three grand saving yeah. straight away more than three grand yeah plus on top of that there's the saving of the this caper the uh, servicing the servicing yeah i mean the cost of ownership for a mercury or a mariner or a tahatsu or a yamaha you have to have it serviced once a season by a, a, an official agent yeah and they're going to be charging you between three and six hundred quid for a service dependent on size yeah right so that's uh, so and, and well, to to seven years guarantee so you're going to be saving 40 four, four grand four, four, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Four grand. plus the price of the engine yeah yeah so you're on more like seven grand well yeah you look at it that there way. are thereabouts now that to me sounds like bargain guys and it's a no quibble warranty parts and labor um we're not going to be saying like a lot of people a lot of manufacturers do oh you've not run it incorrectly or you've not serviced it at exactly the right time or, yeah oh you've overloaded the boat if you have a problem with a parts and engine we have so few problems we will bend over backwards to put it right to sort it. it out yeah, yeah and you can't i tell you what guys you can't say further than that and you can't cover that look at the state of my head because i've had that bloody strap on <laughs> i've had a strap on my head <laughs> i've been i've been looking outside with this strap on for ages but he's not submitted yet <laughs> right i'm assuming the oil filter is specially um made for this engine oh sorry sir any oil filter of the right size and micron um capacity will will do a yamaha one will do a tahatsu one will do uh the, the parson one is very well priced uh it's the one that's designed for the engine so obviously we would prefer that you buy your service kit from us we don't charge a lot for the service kits uh this the oil filter for this is about eight or ten quid something like that cheap yeah it's not expensive not at all. Right, so do I just finger tight that? Well, yeah, yeah get, a, get a fresh uh, rag so that you can really hang off it. Uh, you want to do that as tight as you possibly can by hand. By hand? Yeah. So we don't put the, uh, we don't put that thing on it? Well, I, I would. You do well, put that on it? If you're doing, if you're field servicing this at home, yeah. so long as you're fairly strong, you can finger and you've not got, And you've not got slippy hands and a broken finger? Well, exactly, yeah. From messing about with trailers? Yep. <laughs> Right, I'll tell you what guys, I'm getting a good old uh, twist on that. So just keep going till I can't do it anymore. So you can't go any further, yeah. I'll tell you what, it just, just keeps going. There we go. Yeah, they've got quite a, a thick rubber O-ring. Right, right, I'm thinking I'm about as far as I can go. Okay, let's have a little feel, just for interest sake. With the, uh, I'll be honest with you, I always use a wrench. Yeah. But you are supposed to be able to tighten oil filters by hand, right. and still hold pressure and not leak. Does that apply to cars and boats, or? See, so look at all that. Look, you've. Uh... So I would have given it another quarter of a turn on top of what you've done. Right. Well, interesting that it, it was. It was fairly tight though by hand. Yeah, it, 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 it kept obvi going. Obviously, it, it kept going. I've been. I've been doing plenty of working out. <laughs> it's all that lifting. It's all that lifting. Them rods up and down. <laughs> right. Is that is that serviced? Nearly. It's nearly. Very nearly. So you've changed all the fluids. Yeah. That's it. Gear oil and engine oil. That's it. Yes. Now we're going to do some greasing. Right. Really, really important if you're using your boat in the marine environment, as you are, yep. so grease is your friend. You can't use too much of it. So what we're going to do is we're going to grease your king pin yep. or swivel pin, some people call it. We're going to grease your tilt pin. 
that. Uh, we're going to use some storage seal or plugging oil to spray all the bare corrodable parts of the engine. Yeah. We're going to use some grease on the clamp handles. Uh, sorry, on the uh, cowl uh, handles and also on the moving parts around here. Your gear shift. That, that's the spray the, grease, is it? Throttle mechanism. We're going to use spray grease on those. Right. Uh, we're also going to unscrew your um, steering cable. Yep. And we're going to pack this with grease as well. Right. Ninety-five percent of companies, when they're servicing an outboard for you, will not do that, and that's Forget. the most important bit right. of the whole service, because they well, they seize up for fun. Right. I'll show, I'll show you my trick that my dad showed show me. I've seen your little video on it, so I, I'm, I'm wise to that, but these folks at home won't be. Okay. Uh, just before you do that, Si, yeah. I noticed when you were taking the Michael out of me, <laughs> that you said, because ah, I didn't know this, what that is a uh, flusher yeah, fresh, piper, fresh is water it? flush adapter. And how does that work? So you just unscrew it. Yeah. Sorry guys, I know we're going off tangent, but this is just something for me, because I'm a lazy pig and I don't have any flush muffs. You connect your hose pipe to that. Oh, so just screw it straight in. Screw it straight into that. Yeah. Turn your hose pipe on. Yeah. Go and have a brew or take your fishing gear out of the back. Do I have the engine running? No, you must not run the engine. Ah, right. Because this doesn't get your impeller wet. It just right. just flushes the power head. Ah, right. It's sorted. Okay. Take all your fishing gear out of your boat. Ten yep. minutes later, come and turn it off. And that's your engine flushed, even for a lazy bugger like you. Right, perfect. Yeah? That's, that suits me right down to the ground. And you will see me do that later, or tomorrow, or Sunday, or whenever it is I decide to go home and grace my family with my presence. But I, I will say, if you are using it every day, you, yeah. I mean, you're, you're using it a lot. Yeah. You don't need to do this if no. you're using it every day. No. But if you're on holiday, you use it every day for a week, don't flush it out. At the end of your holiday, connect it to your hose, and give let it, it run for 10 minutes. Right, and the it. sooner you do that after running it, the better as well. If the right. engine's still warm, that's all the better. Yeah. Okay? Sorted. Sorry, sorry guys for going off tangent, it was just something I, need to, I needed to uh, clarify for my own purposes. Right, where am I going with this now? Oh, I'm just trying to see. Do I need to lift that engine or? I think it must be on the inside of the... So, oh. engine up? Yep. We are looking for a grease nipple somewhere. Yeah, have a look up under there. Oops. Ouch. Someone's put a camera on me head. Here. Oh, there it is, is that it? So you come round this side. Yeah. I will take the camera off while we do that, so... I'll hold it. Have I even switched it on? We have switched it on, yes. So, the little handle thing that you yeah, were dying that, to press before... That clips on, does it? That's the, that's the thing that makes it hold on. Now, where are we? There you are. That is not the nicest of things to get to. Hang on, we'll have to do it right-handed. Do I just push this on and clip? Yeah. Press there. The handle, that's there. It. So that's it. Yep. And then squeezy squeeze. Pumpy pumpy. How much pumpy pumpy do I do? We're waiting to till it feels like it's gone hard. That yep. means you've expressed all the air and water. We like it going hard. Yeah. <laughs> it means you've expressed all the air and water out of it. But it would be nice to be able to see a little bit of grease coming out of here or down here. Ah, I see, said the blind man. So that nipple feeds the whole of that. The whole kingpin. Right, yeah. I'm with you. See? School day! Every day, guys! Every single day! What's that for? That's your tilt lock. That locks it in the tilted up position. Right. So, if I wasn't using a piece of wood to hold it up, that's what I'd use? That's what you'd be using, yeah. Right. And that's which, going to get a bit of spray grease as well in a minute. Which do you uh, recommend? Would you recommend that or the...? Well, I use the tilt lock personally, yep. but I don't trail for as long as you do. Right. So, if, if you're trailing for three, four hours, like you very often do, yeah. then a piece of wood is, is brilliant. Right. And that's why I use a piece of wood. I remember you telling me that when I first, when I first bought it, actually. Yeah. I knew there were a reason for it. Hi, right, guys. Because I'm pumping too quick, Si has kind of took over the pumping duties. Yeah, and look, there we, there we go. So that's full. Yeah. That's pumping out one. I can see it pumping out at the top. I don't know how well you're going to see that, guys, yeah, but we'll that. it's pumping out at the bottom and at the top of it. Okay, so that's your uh, kingpin pull. Yeah. So next what we're going to do is spray up under here with spray grease. Yeah. Any moving part, any bit that looks like it might corrode, 
Oh, okay. so, which way's the wind blowing? <laughs> Always check which way the wind's blowing with sprays, guys. Right, am I doing the uh, ramrod? Uh, you don't need to do the actual ram itself. Yeah. No. Just to, what? Just to go. I'll... So I'll just point the bits out to you. Yeah. So you see up here. All right. So we're going your, behind there. That's your power tilt and trim. Yeah. Uh, angle. Sender. So we're right up in there. And that is a little bit awkward guys, but, my side. but that's it. What's the grease? You're gonna spray up under here yeah. on the pin and the eye. Just get this off my head again so you can okay. see. Yeah. There we go. And there's a spring up there as well that we're gonna spray. So basically, you're larruping anything that moves up there. Any moving parts with spray grease. Oh, I said. Um, <laughs> Let me get out of your way. In there, you're going to spray your, your tilt lock on that side and the same on that side. And it actuate it a little bit as you're doing it. Yeah. Okay. Lovely. Now we're going to tilt the engine down. Greasing job on the tilt pin now. On the tilt pin, which is our tilt tube, should I say? This is the tilt tube. Let me just get right. Oh, I'm not right. Yeah, yeah. Were you about to swear then, Mr. Hooker? No, there's a never. I oh, see the nipple. Yeah, there's a nipple there, and there's a nipple right, there. I'm better off getting in the boat to do that, aren't I? Why not? There's, uh, I've got a knife stuck on me. There's one there and one there. That's it. So we're greasing the pair of them, are we? Yep. I'll uh, hold the camera you, for you. You do a bit of uh, camera holding. So, is that locked on? It is now. Yeah, till it pops up, that's it. Uh, Does this matter whether it's upside down, round the record? Does it make any difference? No. I'll go a bit slower then. Yeah. And where am I looking for it coming out of? Just anywhere. Oh, well, there, there you go. go. That's it. Is that it done? Job done. On the same on the other? Yep. There we go, she's pushing out now. There we go. Right, that's that. Nice and easy. So nice and easy does it. So the very last two jobs are maintaining the power head and all the bits and pieces on there. So stuff that we're going to look at greasing. Uh, any electrical connections, bare electrical connections. We're going to use spray grease on those. And then we're also going to put fogging oil or corrosion guard on the power head and that just stops any corrosion in 10, 15, 20 years time you see a power head that's not had that done and they're just all white all over and they look rubbish so we're going to do that we're also going to grease up the uh, cowling latches and that will be pretty much job done oh we've got the steering system to grease as well this is spray grease and you're going to do electrical connections and moving parts with spray grease. Where else? So, here. Yeah, down there. Here. Yeah. A little bit on these. Your cowling latch. Try and get it into here if you can. And under there. Yep. And give it a bit of an actuation just so that it gets it rolling. With it closed, just give it another bit on there. There you go. A little bit on your injector plugs. And all the moving parts, your throttle and gear shift linkages. Uh, it? So have a look up under there, oh, see yeah. if you can see yeah, any see. moving parts. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Don't get it in your mouth. And also your uh, air handler butterfly, which if you look around that side, yeah. So this is the air handler. Yeah. On the top of the butterfly, there's a throttle position sensor. Yeah. So you can spray that a bit. But, yeah, but also on the underside, 
there's the bit that actually articulates it under there. Have, have a good look and see if you can see what, what you're aiming at there. Oh yeah, I can see. Yeah, yeah, we've got that. And your hood catch here. Really out of oil, I think. Yeah, I'll give it me. Might just need a bit of a squeeze or a squirt. Okay, so that's your spray grease. Next, corrosion guard. Corrosion guard. And you can be quite liberal with that. You can spray it anywhere you're damn fancy. Can I spray so it on your teeth? You can spray it on your teeth <laughs> if you want to, yeah. But starter motor, any any place where there's bare just, aluminium. Just give it a. Don't be shy with it. You don't need to lather it on, but just get get it on all the all the spots. Bear in mind, this is a cumulative thing. You're going to do it every service. So, because you use your engine a lot, you're probably going to be wanting to do this twice a year. Yeah. So, yeah, don't 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 be shy with it. Get it on all all the moving uh, all the all right, on everything. All the visible bits. And what's that? Is that like a grease or is no? Just no, a it's a film. It's a thin, very thin film. All right, like the shorts at the bottom of a car. Yep. Right. If you want, you can take the uh, the flywheel cover off. Does it? Yep. Pulls out. Oh, hold on. You've got to take a 10 milli off there. Haha. <laughs> Wait, well, you see this, guys. This looks beautiful. This is the first time I've even seen this. It's my engine. Look at that. Would I be able to see it running like that? You can, of course, yes. Oh, would it not make it right? So I'm just going on so everything, are we? You, you try not to get it on your belt. Doesn't massively matter if you do. <laughs> but try not to. It's a spray. How am I not going to get it on my belt? So, but the reason we've taken this off is just so that we can get right, the power head you. covered a little bit. It's a good job you said that because I would have just larripped it on everything. Well, you know, it's not the end of the world if you do get it on your belt, to be honest. But... Let's go around the front. Oh, engines. Front, back. Alright. A lot of people see this is the front. And it's it not. Isn't. That's the back. Right. What are the uh, numbers on the flywheel for? Where are we? Yeah, like a little measurer. Timing marks. So TDC, that's top dead centre. Right. So when that is lined up with here, yeah. the number one piston is right at the top ah, of right. its right, 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 yeah. stroke. Lovely. So when you're timing an engine up, uh, generally speaking, at tick over, so you, you have a timing light connected to your number one spark plug, yeah. and the timing light flashes when the spark plug uh, fires. Right. So it will show you a tick over the timing mark at top dead centre. As you accelerate under load, that timing will advance because the spark actually happens about 25, 20 to 25 degrees before top dead centre. Right. So that there's a real strong combustion in the chamber by the time the piston is at top dead centre to give the maximum. Ah, right. So that's, that's what they're for. That's how you check your time. Lovely. See, always learning, guys. Never too old to learn. So there I'm, we go. I mean, I'm I'm 26 now, and I'm still learning. <laughs> you told me you're 24. <laughs> Oops. So that. Oh no, we've got to do the steering. We've got to do the steering. Yes. You, you, it's probably the most important bit. It's a little bit time consuming, but it is it's the most important thing. To right. Do. I will flick you off until we're ready to get the steering off. Are you ready now? Uh, yeah, hold on. Right. Yeah, we'll flick you off because no doubt Sai has to go back to that shed for something else. <laughs> <laughs> Brilliant, isn't it? At least you don't have ladders to run down every time you forget something. Guys, he's threatening me with a big spanner now. <laughs> we're going to create today. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to take the um, steering cable nut off. Yep. We're going to pull it as far this way as we possibly can. So pull it, pull it back. Yeah, we're going to. Yeah. <laughs> Be very careful. <laughs> we're going to pull it back, whack it full of grease, put it in, and then we're going to turn the steering wheel to to compress the cable and shove the grease down this cable here right very 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 
important and very rarely done. So, fish back bosh. Right, I'll bring you back in when that's off. Right guys, I've come up on the boat so that we can get a bird's eye view of what's going on here. Um, the nut's now off, so... We're going to pull that back. All right, as, so you, you've... As far as it'll go. You've literally turned the engine. Yep. Right, I'm with you. And now, we're going to whack as much grease as we possibly can. Ignore my scruffy feathers and weight, sir. <laughs> In, on and around this steering cable. Yep. And then when we turn the engine to port, as if we're going to turn to port, that will whack a load of grease back down the cable this way. Right, I can never remember what port is that the starboard side is. Can you not? No, and I know you have a simple way of saying that. Yeah, it's dead easy. My dad taught me, and I've never forgot it. Is there any red port left? Red port left. Red port left. There you go, guys. Another little tip for you. So starboard's right then, I'm assuming. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think we really need to qualify that with an answer, do we? You never know, you know, you never know. <laughs> There's always someone that's going to write in the comments, so which way is starboard? <laughs> you don't deserve an answer then if we can't work that out. <laughs> right, there we go. So we'll go back the other way now, do we? We're going to go back in there, and we're going to get as much of that grease in as we possibly can. Whack it into the nut everywhere that we can, so that it stays inside this uh, this steering tube. And trust me, guys, what he's doing now, I have got personal experience of a steering cable that was never greased, and tr and it and is absolutely horrible to uh, to get the steering cable off for a start. But yeah. it, it wasn't that the steering were like trying to turn a bleeding wagon without hydraulics yeah so this one here for me is, is a is a big one well it, oh, they're all big ones i'm just going to flick you back off again because my battery is running a little bit low while we're tightening that up you don't need that right so now you can imagine in there is full of grease yeah so what we're going to do is we're going to turn to starboard uh, to port rather and that's going to shove this steering cable back that way yeah which is going to compress all the grease and shove the grease down the cable down the cable right turn it. so if i turn me which way am i turning to start to <laughs> yeah don't give it a twist or a done it is that it so you just prolong the life of your steering cable by about five years right? oh, really Bloody hell, that, that's amazing, that, isn't it? So your engine's serviced now. That's that service? Yep, we can start the engine, make sure everything's good, have a little look with the cowling off, make sure we're happy, and yep. then we'll put a lid on it. Right, so we'll just get the water connected back up. Right, guys, back to square one now. Everything's serviced. Um, thank you very much for all the information, Si. Uh, I've got to, got to start this uh, engine up. Are you ready? To, is it ready to rock and roll, Si? Yeah, rock and roll, if you can reach the key, doesn't it? Oh, listen to that! Listen to that, baby! Everything look all right? Everything looks good, yeah. So that's your first service. Yeah. That should be done after between 10 and 20 hours of engine running. Right. And it's when most of the engine wear occurs so three months 10 20 hours that's your first service right. every subsequent service requires a little bit more work right. so at the end of the season come back tune in and i'll show you how to do a 100 hour service brilliant thank you very much sir i <laughs> love you bro you, right guys so there we are um i'm reckoning that's an absolute cracky piece of kit and sai really really knows his stuff i think I think I could uh, do that myself now with the kits. Uh, I will probably have to refer back to this video and do it step by step, which is the whole point of me doing it the way I've done it. But he's trying to fuck me off with the with the old cowl. Look, he pinched my cowl. <laughs> I'm only joking. It is mine. <laughs> but uh, yeah, if you do like the sort of content that I do, guys, please do. 
get our finger waggling and press the like, the subscribe and the notification bell. And also, Simon has his own YouTube channel, which is... Bill Hyam Marine. Bill Hyam Marine. Right, and it will be here above him. Please do press the like and subscribe button and have a look at Simon's channel for us, guys. Um, and we're fishing in a couple of hours, uh, so that'll be a separate video. Uh, so until then, ta-da for now! Ta-da for now!